Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Matt Williams, I'm a tutor in politics and what is known as the Access Fellow here at Jesus College and I'm delighted to be here today with... Hello, I'm Dr. Robin Darwell-Smith and I'm the archivist here at Jesus College and so welcome to the archives here where we hold many interesting and important treasures of the college and today Matt's going to talk to you about I think one of our most important treasures here. So Matt, it's over to you. Thank you very much. So the reason this is so important and special is because it's an exercise book containing the essays of a young man who would go on to become the British Prime Minister. And I'll tell you who that was shortly. Now, the University of Oxford as a whole has educated 30 British Prime Ministers, which is a little bit over half of the total number of Prime Ministers this country has ever had. Those 30 Prime Ministers were educated by the 30 Oxford undergraduate colleges, but not in an even distribution. One college on its own, Christchurch, has educated 13 Prime Ministers, which is a little bit short of the total number that the University of Cambridge as a whole has educated. This college, Jesus College, has educated one British Prime Minister, but world leaders from other countries, including Norman Manley, who was the first Prime Minister of independent Jamaica, and Pixley Ka Isaka Seme, who was the President and founder of the African National Congress. Now, this Prime Minister is Harold Wilson. Now, Harold Wilson was the British Prime Minister from 1964 to 1970, and then again from 1974 to 1976, when he resigned. He, to my mind, is the last British Prime Minister to resign on his own terms at the time that he wanted to. But perhaps more notable are the fact that he presided over the decriminalisation of homosexuality. He made it unlawful to discriminate uh, on the grounds of race and sex. And his government's also created the Open University, which is the biggest higher education provider in the United Kingdom. Now, the reason this is so interesting is because it gives us an insight into Wilson as a young man when he was finding his feet in the world, and it gives us a sense of how academically capable he was. But let me just tell you a little bit more about its significance within the university. What would have happened before personal computers is that students would have handwritten their essays and taken them to their tutorials. Now, an Oxford tutorial is one of the very special parts of an Oxford education. You would historically have sat down one-to-one -one with a professor and the student. The student would read out the essays and the professor would give live oral feedback on those. These days, tutorials can be a little bit bigger, but my tutorials, for example, will never have more than three students in it. That's very unusual to be taught in such small classes on an ongoing basis. You'd have two tutorials a week on average as an Oxford student. The only other university on earth that teaches in such small classes on such a systematic basis is the University of Cambridge. So it's a very special teaching method. And here we can see what Wilson wrote for his tutors, who incidentally thought very highly of him. One of his former history tutors thought he was the best student that he had ever had. And these are clearly highly competent essays. And Wilson would go on to get the best degree that you can possibly get. And indeed, he got the top marks in all of his papers at finals. And what we see from these essays is a very high degree of competency, a very high degree of command of material, as we would say in modern parlance. So he knows his onions, basically. And that was true of Wilson as a politician as well. He had command of his briefs very quickly and very effectively. What these essays don't reveal so much, however, is Wilson's own personality. Now, in modern Oxford, and indeed at other universities I've taught for and have been educated at, we tend to emphasise now not only that you understand the material in your essays, but also you give a sense of your own judgment, that you try and advance the debates and you contribute to those debates rather than standing somewhat at a side and observing what's going on amongst other participants in the debate. So that's what I would, I suppose, criticise about these essays if I was reading them in a contemporary setting. But for their time, they were exceptionally good. And indeed, it was quite rare for a prime minister to get such good marks in finals. Sorry, not just a prime minister, any students. Right. Now, the reason for talking about essays is not only because this is a really cool and interesting artefact, but also because I intend to make a series on essay writing for a number of reasons. First of all, people that apply to the University of Oxford often have to write many essays and they can sometimes quite reasonably get a bit confused and concerned about what they should be writing. And secondly, students in universities, not just Oxford, have to write lots of essays, and I think it might be helpful if we provide some guidance from the perspective of my experience on how you can write better essays. So that's the goal, but do let us know in the comments what you think and what you'd like us to cover in that series, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks so much. Bye now.